a particular point x1 and uh, given a value mu and c value i mean mu and sigma sometimes it is called as a covariance matrix in some of the book the notation is capital s in some of the papers if you can find the notation of covariance matrix is capital c and in sometimes it is capital sigma uh, so here as you can see that 1001 is nothing but a symmetric matrix and as well as it's an identity matrix right and uh, uh, so what i want to find out is p of x1 p of x1 so uh, the formula in the formula what you can replace is replace x by x1 and mu by the value 0 1 and c by the value 1 0 0 1 is the matrix so what you will get is a single value a single probability distribution value you will get at each point p of x1 and p of x2 so this is how you will calculate the value if you can calculate the value then you can easily implement it and uh, so if you can solve in machine learning you try to always solve a small problem based on that so if you can solve a small problem based on this equation or based on some classifier some predictor some regression algorithm so then you can easily implement it because you will know how to you will get to know uh, what are the steps to solve the problem and accordingly you will write your own code and that is why it is very very important to know how to implement uh, how to implement uh, the equation as well so uh, here the equation is pretty simple 1 by 2 pi to the power d by 2 d is a constant d is a value you know that d is nothing but the dimension of the picture vector here it is nothing but 2 so 2 pi is a constant value c determinant c determinant of c to the power 1 by 2 which is also a constant value so e to the power minus 0 0.5 x minus mu transpose c in a verse and x minus mu so while calculating this this is nothing but a vector and um, matrix multiplication huh? so what you have to do here is you have to maintain so you have to be very very careful regarding the dimensions of the vector vector so whenever you will calculate you just have to remember that e to the power some value it should be a single value because you are calculating exponential to the power something it cannot be a vector if it will be a vector then you cannot calculate it so it should start with i'm I, i'm just talking about the tricks so it should start with the one cross something because x is a vector mu is a vector out here so it should start with one cross two followed by two cross two the output will be one cross two then definitely the last one is not the transpose the if the first one is a transpose it is the transpose of the transpose so of course it will be two cross one so the output will be one cross one so in this way you will implement it so now directly coming to the bias classifier so now now uh, slowly we are moving towards the bias and classifier and the bias and classifier says that so let us first talk about a two class classification problem which is very easy to understand and uh, just for simplicity let us first consider two class classification problem and then we will be discussing a multi class classification problem right and uh, so, so multi two class classification problem sometimes called as binary classification problem so two class pattern classification using bayesian classifier so data of a class is represented by its class conditional probability density function so just now we have discussed about this probability of x this equation so in this equation there are two parameters as i already mentioned one is mu and one is c c is nothing but a covariance matrix here so mu is different for different different classes because i already told you that all the time the data of a class will form a cluster if the data if the data will form a cluster data of a class will form a cluster then what will happen is you can apply gaussian distribution functions on it so just remember one thing here that every class will have its own mean and own covariance matrix that's the uh, point you have to remember here so every class every class uh, will have its own mean every class will have its own uh, covariance matrix so uh, then uh, it is otherwise called as likelihood function so for class one it will be probability of x given c1 c1 is given to us so accordingly we will calculate the probability of x this is conditional probability you all know that and for class two it will be probability of x given c2 so 
uh, I will I will I will discuss uh, in detail when we will uh, I will show you the coding and as well as when I will give you an explanation by considering one example by considering one data set. And one more thing is uh, the priori knowledge, the prior probabilities. So let's say initially you are dividing the data, you are having 100 number of samples and out of that 50 samples are from one category and other 50 category uh, other 50 samples are from another category. So your initial task is to divide the data set into training and testing. And what you have done is you have divided the data uh, into 70 and 30 ratio. So I mean 70% is for training and 30% is for testing. So out of 100, so out of 100, if you will consider 70% and out of 100, as I already told you that 50, 50 samples are from class one and class two. So what I'm uh, right now doing is I'm dividing the data set into 70% and 30% ratio. So 70% will go for, 70% of the samples will go for training and rest 30% will go for testing. So it will be better if you will do stratified division, random as well as stratified division. So you can randomly divide 70% out of 170% and you will uh, uh, simply divide the data set into 70%. So 70 samples will go for training and 30 samples will go for testing. I'll come back to the stratified division later on. And uh, just for now, uh, uh, just remember what I'm doing is Simply I'm dividing the data 70% uh, for training and 30% for testing. So that means 70 samples will go for training and 30 samples will go for testing. So as I already said that whenever you will build the model, so you should not uh, use a single sample of the testing set. So uh, uh, then we have to only use the training set. 70% only, that means 70 samples. So out of those 70 samples, some of them, will definitely belong to class one and some of them will belong to class two. So the prior probability will be, let's say, let's say I have divided it randomly and out of that, uh, what I have found out is that 30, 30 samples belongs to class one in the training set itself out of 70 and 40 samples belong to class two. Then how would you calculate the prior probability and what is the prior probability? The prior probability is in nothing but here 30 by 70 and 40 by 70, 30 by 70 is for class one and 40 by 70 is for class two. So this is what I mean based on the, based on the output levels, how many output levels or how many output values uh, uh, belong to class one and how many output values belong to class two out of the total number of training samples will represent the prior probability. And uh, then the how Bayesian rule. So Bayesian rule is already there in mathematics. It's a too old, too old equation. And now people are using, I mean, the machine learning people and the pattern recognition people, researchers, they have used it to solve some pattern classification problem and see how it helps and how the rule looks like. If you look at the rule uh, on the left hand side, something called as P of C1 given X probability of a class one given X. So this X is nothing but a testing sample for which you want to find out the class level. You want to find out the probability for class one as well as class two. So given X, for a given X, you want to find out the probability for class one, the posterior probability for class one, and the posterior probability for class two. So that means always, whenever you are solving a binary classification problem, for each and every testing sample, you will get two different probability values. So out of those two probability values, then how will you decide that whether it belongs to class C1 and class C2 that I will discuss later on? Just you see the equation which is written on the right hand side. The equation written in the right hand side is nothing but the likelihood which is, uh, uh, which you can see uh, I have mentioned as a likelihood function, probability of X given as C1, and uh, then multiply by the prior probability of this C1 divided by a normalization factor, which is called as P of X. But this P of X is a positive value and is constant for all the classes. And you know if it is a positive value and a constant for all the classes. So I can ignore this because it is used in all this, uh, both the equations and it is a positive value. 
and it is a constant value so i should not i i, I should ignore it because why i will consider it so uh, so th therefore you can easily ignore the uh, the the p of x part in this equation so the only thing you will use is the numerator part that probability the posterior probability of c1 given x is equal to the p of x given c1 multiplied by c1 and the p of x uh, the uh, the p of x part as i already mentioned that we have to ignore it i mean you can you can consider but why i will consider as i already know that it's a positive constant value and it is divided in all the equations uh, in uh, for all the classes and it is at the value actually, actually same for all the classes so why i will evaluate it so that is, therefore i can easily you know the uh, denominator out here and uh, the probability of occurrence of x and px is the normalization factor uh, so now the equation uh, is simplified to the only the numerator part so what i have uh, uh, told you is then how do you decide how do you decide that whether my sample will belong to class c1 or c2 so let us uh, see it yeah so let's say you are uh, trying to classify a test sample x so now the question is and we are solving a binary classification problem so now the question is whether x will belong to class c1 or c2 so then what we have to check is one condition one decision rule and the decision rule says that if the posterior probability of a class is greater than the posterior probability of another class for that sample for that testing sample then that testing sample will belong to the class for who is the posterior probability is the maximum one so that means if you can see in this equation in this decision rule what i have written is if posterior probability of c1 given x is greater than c2 of x that means the posterior probability of c1 is greater than c2 for the sample x so that means my x pattern my pattern x will belong to c1 because the because we are we are uh, uh, calculating the class level or evaluating the class level based on the higher posterior probability otherwise what will happen x will belong to c2 this is uh, the rule this is the decision rule you have to follow whenever you will use bayesian classifier whenever you will Uh, you know uh, implement it so now the question is how will you extend it to multi class classification problem because in real life the problem may be multi class you are let's say you, you want to classify you want to classify animals of four categories so then how will you solve again you have to calculate the posterior probability of all the classes and you have to find out that for which class the posterior probability is the highest one and based on that you will assign the pattern to the class so it is rather easy to extend a binary classification problem in bayesian classifier to a multi class classification problem so but, uh, this is the equation if you can see here the equation out here for the generalized equation or generalized bayesian decision theory x is assigned to ci ci here is i uh, i is nothing but the class numbers here so if probability of ci given x again we are calculating uh, we are we want to assign uh, a, a, a test sample or an unknown sample x to a class level so if ci if ci i mean the posterior probability of ci is greater than posterior probability of cz so of course uh, x will belong to class ci and uh, here i have also mentioned as p of x as p of x is positive as p of x is positive and same for all the classes so therefore um, instead of this i mean the the equation which is written in above so what you can do you can replace that one with this one the below one simply p of i mean the posterior probability is equal to likelihood multiplied by the prior probability so i am simply ignoring the denominator part and simply i have replaced the numerator part with the posterior probability here you can see either you can calculate the posterior probability or else you can this is actually posterior probability or else you can simply multiply and you can there are different views of the implementation so now the question is so given a problem or given a data set how will you solve 
the problem using Bayesian classifier. So there are two things. So first you have to divide the data set into training and testing. As we've already discussed that 70 sample will belong to class C1 and sorry, uh, I mean training set and 30 samples will belong to test set. So uh, then from those 70, these 30 you should not touch because this is a testing and we should treat it as an unknown sample. You will test it to, uh, you will ver to verify your model, how your model is behaving on the unknown samples. So leave, leave those 30 samples right now. You just, so now let us talk about only 70 samples which are in the training set. So what I have to calculate? So for each test set, for each test set sample, I have to calculate likelihood value as well as, as well as what? As well as uh, the uh, uh, prior probability, prior probability. So the P of X values, as I already told you that this value and uh, uh, for this to calculate the P of X given C1, the likelihood, we need two parameters. What are those parameters? Mu and mu and sigma, I mean mu and capital C. So mu can be calculated for each class, as I already told you that mu can be calculated for uh, C1, mu can be calculated for C2 because every class forms a cluster and you can find out, every, I mean for each data point, you can find out for each data point of a class, you can calculate a mean vector. Similarly, so you can also calculate the closeness among the uh, samples of a particular class by calculating the covariance matrix. So to calculate P, X given C1, we need two parameters, uh, say mu1 and C1, capital C1. Capital C1 represents here covariance matrix, small C1 represents a class. So to calculate that, we have to uh, first evaluate small, uh, I mean mu1 and capital C1. Similarly, to calculate uh, the likelihood of class two, so you have to calculate from the training sample itself, because training sample, in, uh, as I already mentioned, the 30 sample belongs to class one and 40 sample belong to class two. So accordingly, you can calculate. You can calculate because from those 30 samples, uh, from those 30 samples, you can calculate mu one, you can calculate capital C one. Again, for the rest of the 40 samples, which belongs to, class C2, so you can calculate mu2 C2, capital C2. So now you have calculated mu1, capital C1, mu2, capital C2, and the prior probability is pretty easy to calculate. As I already told you, it is nothing but prior probability of class 1 is nothing but 30 by 70, and the prior probability of class 2 is equal to 40 by 70, right? So now we have calculated all these things. So now it is our job to calculate the posterior probability for each of the testing sample. So for each of the testing sample, let us consider the first testing sample. And for each of the testing sample, you have to calculate two posterior probability, probability of C1 given test sample one, probability of C2 given test sample one. So for that same sample, you have to calculate two probabilities and check which probability is higher. That's it. And for that, you have to calculate uh, this two for one, one is likelihood function. And you just replace the X value with the value with the first testing sample value. And mu is already calculated for class one. So in this formula, what you have to replace is X will be replaced by the first testing sample. Mu will be replaced by the, because you are calculating for class C1, mu will be mu one and capital C will be capital C one. And X will be the first testing sample. Similarly, so now you have, uh, you are now calculating the class level actual class level which will be predicted by your model for the class test sample one test sample one so again you have already calculated probability i mean the prior probability which is nothing but three by seven um, for 30 by 70 and right now you have calculated the posterior, posterior probability uh, for class one so a second time you will calculate again the posterior probability for class two and the posterior pro for, for calculating the posterior probability of class two, what you have to do is you have to calculate the likelihood for class two. And for likelihood of class two, you have to, again, X will be replaced by the first testing sample and mu will be replaced by mu two. C, capital C will be replaced by capital C two. Again, you will get some value and the prior probability of class two is already calculated from the training set. And now you could able to 
achieve two different postural probability value, then you have to check which one is better. So accordingly, now what you have done is simply you have you have assigned a class label for a test sample one. Similarly, you will run a for loop. You will run a loop for all other models. I mean, for all other testing samples, and each time you will assign one one class label to each testing sample. I hope you would have uh, you understood the concept uh, the of the Bayesian classifier, how you will implement it, and uh, coming to two other classifiers which are related to the Bayesian classifiers. I will not discuss some uh, um, more about it right now. Yeah. So before uh, 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 going to the uh, other classifier, so what I want to discuss is, uh, uh, let us try to solve a problem uh, related to the Bayesian classifier. That will also make you understand what exactly happening inside Bayesian classifier. So just uh, read out uh, the uh, problem here. Uh, consider a two-class classification task in two-dimensional space. That means it's a two-class classification task. Binary classification task in the two-dimensional space means feature is of two dimensions, where the data in both the classes, omega 1, omega 2, in some of the books, it is the class, uh, I mean, the class notations are small c. In some of the books, the class notations are small omega 1 and small omega 2 are distributed according to the, I mean, the data in both the classes they have mentioned that are distributed according to the Gaussian distribution because whenever you are applying an bias classifier, we are assuming that all the data are following Gaussian distribution. And that is very, very important to understand. And if you can see here, it's a two-class classification problem. So I told you already that you will have two different means for two different classes. You will have two different covariance matrix for two uh, for two different classes. But here you can see the covariance matrix is same for both the classes. It is possible. It is possible. The covariance matrix is same, but both uh, the, for both the class it is calculated. Mu1 and mu2 are different here. So for both the classes we have calculated, I mean, it is given that mu1, mu2, c1, c2. Assuming that P of class 1, this is nothing but the prior probability, which you have discussed as a P of c1 here, prior probability you can see prior probability p of c1 c2 here it is similar to p of omega 1 and omega 2 is equal to 1 by 2 i mean both are equiprobable so whenever uh, both are equiprobable it is sometimes uh, difficult to find out the class level by using simple probability theory so now the uh, thing is uh, the question here is classify a sample into either omega 1 of course it's a two class classification problem it will either belong to omega 1 or belong to omega 2 so uh, the test sample is 1.8 1.8 it is of two dimension and everything is given to you uh, the mu 1 mu 2 c1 c2 p omega 1 omega 2 so the uh, right now what you have to calculate is for this x value you have to calculate two posterior probability and um, for uh, both the classes and you have to check that which postural probability is a higher. So you can see I have calculated the postural probability and uh, the postural probability value. You have to check it whether the values are correct or not. And uh, because I have calculated by myself, maybe it is wrong sometimes. So you can you have to check it uh, by using that formula that whether it is correct or wrong. And uh, what I have found is uh, 0 0.042 is for class one, the postural probability and uh, the postural probability for class 2, it is uh, nothing but 0 0.0189. And you, you can see that the postural probability value is higher for class 1. So that's why I have written in the text, a red color text, that x is classified to omega 1, I mean class 1. I hope you all have understood it clearly. Uh, very important to understand. If you can understand this concept, then only you can implement it easily. So coming back to the minimum distance classifier, which are derived, which are derived or which are nothing but the simplified versions of the Bayesian classifier. But uh, uh, there are some assumptions or there are some, there are certain conditions. Uh, uh, if those conditions will be satisfied, then only the Bayesian classifier will be simplified to minimum distance classifier. So what are those conditions? And it is otherwise called as Euclidean distance classifier. 
and uh, there are two two types of actually distance minimum distance based classifier i will talk about which is uh, i mean bayesian classifier it's a kind of classifier and these two classifiers are the derived versions of the even simplified versions of those classifiers you can treat it as a, a different classifier so today we will talk about three different classifiers if you see and uh, so what are those what are those conditions the classes are equiprobable so the condition should be the classes should be equiprobable uh, i mean when you can apply euclidean distance classifier and as i already told you that this minimum distance classifier is rather easy to evaluate rather easy to implement than the bayesian classifier so let us let us check whether this condition satisfied from your data or not if this conditions are satisfied you can apply uh, these all uh, these these classifiers which are pretty easy to understand i mean pretty easy to implement so the condition let us discuss one by one the classes are equiprobable the classes are equiprobable means the prior probability should be same for both the classes if you look at this example p of omega 1 is equal to p of omega is equal to p of omega 2 is equal to 1 by 2 this means for this case the classes are equiprobable second thing the data in the classes follow gaussian distribution which we are assuming all the time whenever we are applying this type of technique and the third condition is very important condition and the fourth one is the most important one the third one says that the covariance matrix should be same for all the classes so here you can see c1 is equal to c2 it is same for all the classes 1 0 0 is identity matrix this condition should be there and and if you can see the covariance matrix uh, the last one is very important one the covariance matrix should be a diagonal one and all the elements across the diagonal are equal so you know i hope ki i, I already told you that we need Uh, the help of the linear algebra probability theory to understand the concept of machine learning and pattern recognition algorithms and here it is required uh, to understand the concept of diagonal matrix so diagonal matrix i hope you all know that uh, the diagonal values should be, the principal diagonal values should be non zero and all other values should be zero and 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 what are the what are the points here i have written is the matrix should be diagonal and all the elements across the diagonal should be equal so i mean only uh, one one uh, here it is 1 0 0 and means that condition is satisfied if the value is 2 0 2 0 2 also this condition is satisfied because it is a 2 0 0 2 is a diagonal matrix and all the diagonal elements are same so this particular problem this particular problem can also be solved using euclidean distance based classifier so how it is that and how do you decide that uh, whether a uh, given a uh, given a sample how would you decide that whether uh, that sample will belong to class 1 or class 2 or any other class so look at the look at the formula here so you have to calculate the euclidean distance between that sample to the mean of the each class so you have to calculate the test the distance between the test sample to the mean vector of the each class and as you are calculate as you are calculating the distance vector the distance values so we will not look at the maximum one here rather we will look at the minimum because you are calculating the distance and for which the distance is minimum and that will be uh, the class level so let's say the first uh, the, the left side of this uh, equation is nothing but let's say di or uh, the right side i mean i am uh, treated is a uh, di and uh, the right side one is nothing but let's say i am representing it as dz so if di is less than dz so my x will belong to ci so i mean the class i uh, so that means the distance of this unknown sample x to the class i the to the mean vector of the class i is less than the mean vector of the class j i hope you have understood the concept pretty easy to understand the concept so it assigns a pattern to the class very important line it assigns a pattern to the class whose mean is closest to it with respect to the euclidean norm and this equation is very well known you all know that and now if you see now you can uh, tell me that my point is one i mean my feature vector is 1.8 and 1.8 and one uh, when, and and uh, one uh, feature vector sorry one mean mean vector is 11 and the one is 
3 3 so which one if you calculate the distance between this x and mu 1 x and mu 2 which will be the closer one of course the distance between this vector x and mu 1 is closer because you can see the difference 1 to 1.8 here it is 1.8 to 3 so see by looking at the problem i can easily tell the uh, and 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 uh, the class level directly so this is uh, what the importance of this euclidean based distance classifier is you know, which is nothing but a simplified version of the bayesian classifier so coming to the uh, uh, next variety or uh, another variety of uh, minimum distance classifier which is called as mahalanovich distance plus classifier i hope you all have known mahalanovich which is, who is an indian scientist and who is uh, i think the founder of Indian Statistical Institute, I hope you all have heard about this name, ISI Kolkata. is the founder uh, of this part of the, this institute and he's one of the top institute in top research institute we have in our country. So he's an Indian scientist and very famous a statistician and uh, uh, very, very important to know about him and as well as the classifiers associated with this Mahalanovic distance measure. So uh, then there are actually some difference between Euclidean distance based classifier and Mahalanovic distance based and the differences are nothing but in the conditions. So uh, we have discussed about four conditions in Euclidean distance classifier. If these four conditions will be satisfied together, then we can simplify a Bayesian classifier in, I mean, uh, simplified to a Euclidean distance classifier. But here, here the, uh, you can see for the conditions are from one to four, right? So the first condition, second condition, third condition, fourth condition. The only condition which is left, I mean, which is not required in case of uh, the fourth one. I mean, the Mahalanovis uh, distance classifier is nothing but the fourth one. Everything will be same. The classes should be equiprobable. The data should follow Gaussian distribution. The covariance matrix should be same for all the classes. The covariance matrix is the same for all the classes, but it should not be diagonal. It should not be diagonal and the last condition will not hold. So if the last condition is not holding, so then you can uh, use uh, the Mahalanovic distance based classifier in place of Euclidean distance classifier. And how, um, the, how you will decide whether uh, uh, the particular unknown sample will belong to class one or class two, you can see how, uh, how different it is from the uh, you know, Euclidean distance based decision rule only the thing here I have written in terms of S inverse. Again, you just uh, you just treat it as a C inverse, capital C inverse, which is nothing but which is nothing but covariance matrix. So you have to calculate the value here, the distance here, and check that for which class the distance is less, and uh, accordingly you can implement it. So now your job is to implement three different things. So even if I have seen even if these conditions, even if these conditions are not satisfied, sometimes people used to directly apply Euclidean distance based classifier, Mahalanovic distance based classifier without, without checking all the conditions. That is also sometimes okay, but uh, the, 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 at that time you have to check whether it is giving good results or not. And if it is not giving good results, then again you have to come back to the conditions and check whether the conditions are satisfied or not. But it's better always if you can check the conditions and apply, uh, apply it uh, after uh, checking all the conditions. Uh, otherwise, you can directly apply the Bayesian, simply uh, the conventional Bayesian classifier, which we have already discussed. And uh, right now, our job is to implement these algorithms or uh, by means of a data set. So Sandeep, sir, are you there? Yes, sir, I am there. I am here, sir. I think something is first time I am experiencing. yes, sir. And uh, the, the theory part is actually covered, and I have also given uh, uh, some, uh, you know, what is that? Uh, uh, just a minute i've already uh, given a view of implementation how we will implement it so 
uh, I don't know how to how to run the code in the mobile. Uh, yes, I think sir. it is not possible <laughs> because I have to open at least one compiler for this, right? And uh, yes, it is there. Right. It is, it is there can, actually. It uh, is we there. Can do it. We can do it online uh, through some online compiler. Yeah, that's fine. But data is with my laptop only, sir. Yes, and yes, I know. The that. battery. That the battery. Not, we, can, like, we need to see. My battery is died, sir. Unfortunately, my battery is died because I was not expecting this uh, today. And uh, I hope ki uh, sir, ye jo bhi uh, jo humne abhi discuss kiya and then uh, uh, the jo session hamara hai na, na jo next session jo hai. Yes. Usse pehle I will first show you. I mean, I will first discuss uh, the codings and all these things, and then I will start discussion. And it may extend to some. Uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, it was I think. Decided to take from two to uh, three thirty, right? Yes, uh, right. Now it is two to three thirty. Uh, but it can be extended to four o'clock. No problem. I hope so. Uh, no, sir. Actually, we cannot expand it. But we, what we can do, we can start earlier. Oh, okay. As your wish. As your wish. Kali Bhagwan ke liye current aa jaye, jo bhi. And I hope. Uh, okay. Is there any any doubt with this? Any implementation? Have you? I mean, I am asking to all the participants. Did you get any implementation view? How would you implement given a data set? Let's say you want to solve a problem. You want to solve a, um, a, a pattern recognition problem. So, how will you do that? Can anybody explain, or if anybody wants to ask some questions, he can ask, or she can ask. I can explain it right now. That how, or given a problem, or given. A set of images. How we will solve a problem using Nebbias classifiers and all? This. Please, uh, if you are having any questions, I will definitely show you. Uh, one data set. Uh, I mean, a simple data set. I will consider and show you how Nebbias classifier is working. And uh, I will also show you one more demonstration, as it is, a, and as this workshop is based on image processing and pattern recognition. I will uh, consider one example where uh, I will take a data set, medical data set of uh, brain MRI images, and then I will show you how I am extracting the features from it and how I am storing it in a feature vector. Then how I I am combining all the feature vector to form a feature matrix. So then how I am dividing the data set into two different parts, training and testing, and then how I am designing a Bayesian classifier to uh, to 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 pass the training set and testing set at a time and to predict the accuracy uh, from this. I will show you actually. I'm really sorry that uh, this type of uh, things are happening <clears throat> today, but uh, I will definitely show you. Is OCR huh? one question I have uh, got? Yes, sir. One question is there in the yeah. chat box. Is OCR classification can be done? Yes, sir. Of course, why not? Uh, we can. But as I already mentioned, that OCR. Uh, let's say you want to uh, uh, you want to classify numerals, handwritten numerals. That is also kind of OCR. And uh, handwritten numerals uh, is a nothing but a ten class classification problem. We all know that numerals. Uh, Always varies from zero to nine, and let's say it is an atomic uh, numeral. I mean, uh, zero, one, two, all are independent and all are different, and uh, so it will be definitely a ten-class classification problem, and it is in the form of a, a form of images. So originally, what we are uh, having is we are having some training set with uh, uh, the images from all the classes. We are having some training set, and uh, with the images from all the classes. So what we have to do is initially, if we require We may apply some pre-processing technique. Otherwise, if the images are good and if your feature extraction methodology is such uh, a robust one, so it can directly it can directly extract or derive features. Maybe maybe the features can be of shape features, geometric features, maybe of some transform features, transform image transform features. Let's say wavelet. So you can apply wavelet on each of those images, and uh, then then you can extract the frequency domain features. And uh, let's say, uh, let's say you are you have extracted hundred uh, hundred features, hundred features, 
or you can simply apply also dct uh, discrete cosine transform this is for your transform and let's say uh, you have extracted 100 100 number of frequency domain values or frequency values or features uh, for each of the samples so now your feature vector is of 1 cross 100 dimension i mean it is a 100 dimension feature vector and uh, again for the second sample you will follow the same procedure and for all the training sample of all the classes uh, so what you will do is you will calculate uh, the feature vector in a similar manner so finally let's say you are having um, 500 training samples so you will get a 500 cross 1000 500 cross 1000 a matrix why because for each of the 500 samples you will get 100 100 100 100 feature vector so then what you will do is uh, again so now 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 the bayesian classifier can be applied because now the values now the values can be easily passed to the bayesian classifier and uh, in, similar, in the similar way you can also extract the features of all the testing samples so you have already extra, let's say you have uh, extracted the features for all the testing samples and uh, now you are having the training samples as well as it's i mean the class level a training input training output then testing input and testing output so then what you will do is you will apply a bayesian classifier and for each of these testing sample again the similar way you have to follow you have to first calculate a mu1 c1 mu2 c2 and so on up to mu 10 c10 and you have to calculate also the posterior probability of class 1 up to class 10 these are the things which are required to calculate the posterior probability of the 10 different classes for a particular sample and then you have to check for which class uh, i mean for uh, yes for, the, for which class the value is maximum and accordingly you will assign the testing each of the ocr images the numerical images what you are having in the testing set to uh, different different classes and after that you will have a vector of actual output which you have predicted by your model and then and then then you have, and we are already having uh, that uh, desired output or the target output then you can calculate the confusion matrix and you can calculate accuracy and whatever you want the sensitivity and the, all the uh, things roc curves and everything area under the curve for each of each of the class you can calculate and uh, in the way you can apply uh, even this one and not only this bayesian classifier you can apply any other classifier in a similar way this is what exactly the pattern recognition problem is i hope uh, you have understood sir yes But one more question is there uh, from Ankur sir, that is whether Mahalanobis's distance is applied for the vector images only. Ankur Vishnu, yeah, yeah. Ah, second question I got received whether Mahalanobis distance is applied for vector images. Can you explain it in a? Uh, can you explain it in detail? What you so want Uncle sir, Uncle sir, you can unmute yourself and you can ask directly. No, you can, you can please, you can please unmute your mic and yes. please discuss yes. directly. So actually, I've I've seen many filters, but in case of a vector, vector connection. Can you please say loudly, sir? Can you please say? Uh, can you please say loudly? Sandeep sir, I think. Uh, sir, uh, I think some technical issue is there again. Technical mm -hmm. issue is there, exactly, exactly. Uh, let. Uh, sir, uh, 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 sir uh, I think uh, let us stop here, and the moment I, uh, the moment the current will come, I will let you know, and. Uh, yes, sir. And, sir, uh, one thing yeah, we can do. One thing we can do, if possible, if you have a code yeah. with you on mail or like. Uh, or like no, sir, I don't write the code in email. I can attach it, but the thing is, I have to switch on my laptop, right? <laughs> sir, you can, if you have, then you can share it with me. I can share it to all the participants. And then, yeah, yeah, uh, it, is, it is actually, it is sir, not with, uh, I mean, I have not attached uh, 
and in my email it is there in my laptop sir the moment as i said the moment i will uh, switch up and i mean i will i will switch on my laptop i will definitely start it and and before i start my session of medical imaging i will definitely uh, first finish this part and i have already discussed i hope i have already discussed the, the, the implementation view and i will simply show the code and they will easily able to understand the code and later on i will share also the code no problem i will share the code as well okay 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 sir then then we can we need to wait it yeah 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 i am expecting that uh, everything will be uh, fine okay sir uh, right right now they are concluding yeah. it and uh, as soon as uh, like you are able to take the lectures let me know we will start sure. within 15 minutes sure. i will convey the sure, message sure. to the students on uh, group and i also ask and request all the participants to be connected through whatsapp as soon as we got uh, like we are able to connect or sir will be able to connect i will let you know through whatsapp and we will start the session uh, like this and i'm really sorry sir for this inconvenience no sir no, no need to say sorry sir no. it's okay so thank you very much thank you sir and uh, I, i again thanks to all please be connected through whatsapp yeah the last session will be very fruitful i'm saying very very fruitful to all of you yes sir yes sir okay thank, thank you so much sir okay, sir. bye